What's up, everyone? It's Tycho here with Your Voice Media, and I'm talking to Phil and Dan. Let me let you both know this. I am loving the show. This is amazing. This Thank is what you. we needed, okay? Now, my first question is for you, Phil, and we've seen the show discuss therapy, veganism, yes. which I love because I'm a plant-based eater, All right. and other topics and themes that are becoming a little more implemented in the Black community. Are you using the show to address the taboo topics that you may feel the Black community needs to address in order for us to grow and move forward as a community? Um, I, I, overall, I think with each episode without being preachy or standing on a soapbox, we definitely wanted to cover topics that are pertinent to the black community, even if some of those topics are uncomfortable, uh, conversations to have. Um, and so when, you know, the therapy episode, which I think is an episode that's super close to my heart because I only started doing therapy last year it felt like ripe territory for us to cover that because uh, it is it is still stigmatized in the Black community. And I know personally that I've benefited so much from, from doing it that it was like, okay, how do we find a way to tell a story like that, but still make it fun and funny? And so throughout the course of the season and with each episode, we definitely have at least one theme that is relevant to the Black community and Black men specifically. Um, and we tried to do it in a way that's still um, led with the fun without making the joke, the, the taboo thing, if that makes sense. Still tasteful. That's what I like. Also, yeah. I think when Thank you're you. trying to when you're trying to make comedy, conflict and and like stigma or taboo, it's juicy. You know, it's good. It's like it's a good starting place. Yeah. You know, like when when in the in the in the therapy episode, when Noah uh, 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 when Wyatt brings up therapy, everyone's reaction feel so genuine and funny right off the bat, you know, and then it's like, oh, okay, we're right into the comedy story now. And I've know? had, I've had those conversations in real life, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, um, and so, yeah, it just felt, it felt like uh, just fun and, and, and interesting um, for us to do. That's awesome. Now, Dan, what was it about Grand Crew that made you want to sign up and help Phil develop? Um, well, I signed up, I signed up with Phil first. Uh, Phil and I worked together on Brooklyn Nine Nine, and I was blown away by by his talent, um, both in terms of being a, a, a funny person, but also in terms of telling story, and really in terms of uh, how he how he deals with people. I just I really I loved working with him, and um, selfishly, I was like, I got to hitch my star to this, yeah, hitch my wagon to yeah. this star, whatever the expression is. Um, <laughs> We'll go and with that so one. I, yeah, I, I had I had to hitchhike in the moon. I don't know, um, but also I, I'm like I have fun with Phil, so I was like, "Hey, uh, do you want to um, do you want to develop something together? Do you want to make a show together?" And Phil, very luckily for me, said yes. And then we spent a little bit of time trying to come up with real sitcom ideas. I mean, like you know, it's just very traditional sitcom ideas that. Uh, and while we would have these discussions, we'd meet every. Monday or something for breakfast mm -hmm. and we'd talk about ideas and before because like everybody we wanted to procrastinate I'd be like Phil tell me about your life also I'm married and boring so I was like please tell me something interesting happened and he would talk about going to this wine bar and hanging out with his friends and like all the different dynamics and eventually I was like Phil I think that might That's be the show, show. Yeah, and then he was like, "Oh, it's definitely the show." And then we went and saw it, and I mean, I went and hung out at the wine bar with him, and it was it felt so rich, and and so I loved the idea. But really, I mean, truth be told, I was just really in love with the idea of working with Phil. I love that. Now, Phil, you are bridging black culture onto a historically white network and normality mm -hmm. into these characters of do rags, our African American vernacular. What was that like to get all those intricate parts of the black experience into the show? Was there anything you wanted to add that didn't make the cut this season? Um, I, the only stuff that I think didn't make the cut was just the limitations of only having 10 episodes of stories to tell. Um, uh, NBC, they were great collaborators and they were, they were down for the, the topics that I wanted to cover and, and from the, the thematic stuff down to the super fun and silly stuff, they were, they were very on board for that. Um, but uh, I think at the end of the day, it was just writing in my tone of voice. Um, yeah. I, I don't think I was um, as intentional of like saying, okay, this is how, this is how it needs to be to speak to culture. It's like, cause I'm, I'm only one person and one individual with, with, with my, my specific writing style. And so I think we, we led with that as a room, as a writer's room, as opposed to, um, you know, force, forcing any type of um, 
kind of dialogue or, 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 or style. But I think you also didn't feel like there were guardrails and there were things you couldn't for sure talk about oh, yeah. or do. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Very open space for you to be creative. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Now you also have an overall deal with universal television. Yeah. Now, can you give the audience just a little bit, an idea on possibly the next project that you may have cooking up for us? Oh, I thought you were going to ask him how much money he was making. I, was like, this is I mean, you want to ask that too, Phil. I do I don't not. Know. <laughs> I do not recall. Um, I, I've got a couple of things in the mix, but I, I don't want to get into the details of it, but I will say um, I am interested in uh, telling more uh, nuanced Black stories and um, uh, helping people from a producerial standpoint that look like me tell more stories, whether it be on network TV or otherwise. So um, I think there, there, there's room for more, more showrunners uh, of color, more black showrunners. And my hope is that I can play some part in kind of elevating uh, and expanding the, the, the number um, of, of black creatives that get their shot at um, speaking their voice and, and, and telling stories that they want to tell. Also, uh, it should be pointed out. Oh, sorry, please say me. what you were going to say. I was going to say running a show is like more than a full-time job. So yeah, yeah. if he, if Phil, especially early on, it's so hard. And so it's like, I love hearing you say that you're gonna do that, but I'm like, I don't I'm already, know. That's why I'm How here, that? Dan, that's why I'm here. He's man. a Superman, <laughs> Pinky, so that's why. for me, you got this. Now, one thing I have for you both is we would love to have Garrett Morris back. Now, he was great as a narrator, was the intention to only have him introduced in the series in the beginning? Can we possibly implement in a new season? Before we wrap here, what can we expect? Yeah, so um, Garrett, Garrett is is a legend. He's amazing and is and so amazing as a human being. Um, and we were lucky to have him for get him for the pilot. We we did have some discussion um, uh, about bringing him maybe for in the pilot, the middle and the end. But the way that the season ended up breaking out, it didn't feel like it felt naturally within how the stories were breaking. Um, that being said, you know, if we're fortunate enough to get a season two, I think it's a conversation that we definitely would be open to just considering how amazing he is and how he can be used to, to, to tee up, uh, you know, thematically what we want to achieve broadly, um, with it, it, in the case that we were to get a new season, but, um, he, he doesn't appear anymore in season one, but it was something that we definitely talked about and we were very, very fortunate and excited to, um, to have him play, play, play a part in the show. I love that. Well, cheers and hoping for season two. And I want to let you know, Phil, I love the little nod you give to Insecure in one of the later episodes run the song choices. Insecure fans, if you know, you know. All right. Um, and I hope to see more. So thank you both so much. Thank you so much.